and welcome to another edition of Digging History and Honoring the Sacrifice. I am your host, James McCormick, and excuse my hat here, but I want to show you this hat here. It's a really cool hat. It's called, it's, uh, it's my Nocta Micro Simplex Plus hat. Say that three times fast. N yeah, try that. No, Nocta I'm good. I'm good. Simplex. <laughs> Nocta Micro Simplex Plus hat. And I've used the Nocta Micro Simplex uh, plus a few times this summer and done really well. There's been some great video of it. It's an excellent machine. Again, more of it has to do not so much with the, the expense of the machine, but the operator. Would you agree with that? I don't know. I haven't got one of their machines. So <laughs> if they're watching, send me a machine and we'll find out. <laughs> I'm going to have to call them again. They're, they're Corbett does not promote anybody that does not help promote digging history. So That's right. You won't get free advertisement. <laughs> What's the name of that company you were working with? Which one? The metal detecting? Yes. <clears throat> Detectorwarehouse.com. Detectorwarehouse.com. And John Burgess those. does sell those, if That's I'm right. not mistaken. I do believe he does sell those. You know, I was going to reach out to those guys because... Um, I would like to do some more joint ventures. We're starting to get a lot of hits on our YouTube channel. Uh, as a matter of fact, I got a phone call yesterday from a lady that has just started metal detecting out in Tornado. And she was so excited, she sent me uh, a picture of all these bullets and things that she found. Now, out of the bullets that she found, they were a lot of modern. Mm -hmm. But she did find one small... Well, there were there were skirmishes in Tornado. Civil War bullet. <clears throat> Tornado and all down through Red House, all down through there. So, matter of fact, one of the generals got captured down there at Red House. Uh, you're right. Or Eleanor, whatever you want to call it. And you know, another thing, that whole Coal River area is just absolutely loaded with... Matter of fact, there, did I not tell you there's a, a Confederate captain buried at that right behind the um, Eleanor... Not Eleanor. Um, Bancroft? No. One down towards Winfield, Boca. right Winfield? behind the Winfield yeah. um, courthouse. Courthouse, yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, I wanted, I wanted to put a flag up for him, but I don't know if they'll let us do that or not. Well, they might. You know, it depends on who owns it. He was killed there. I'll be done. You're right, you're right, during the little skirmish mm -hmm. of the, uh, of, in Winfield, West Virginia. So, I mean, there's a lot of history, and we're going to talk a little bit about history. But since we just celebrated the birthday of West Virginia. Happy birthday. Hey, look. I, look, look, there's so many things. People mm -hmm. will say negative things about the state of West Virginia, but the reality is, is the state of West Virginia is a beautiful and a gorgeous state that is offering opportunities for people if they come here and to enjoy them. That's why we're gonna have Corbett talk about our state flag. And then of course, we're gonna get into the field and into digging and we've got some really good video to show you uh, from the field. But without any further ado, Corbett, uh, I you don't sir. Have, I don't have the current one. Okay, well, I didn't know this, but we do have three different West Virginia flags. Mm -hmm. The very first one, which was just the rhododendron, mm -hmm. the white background bordered by the blue, which the blue meant uh, loyalty to the, to the Union. Of course, white purity, and of course, the rhododendron, our state flower. Well, a few more years went down the line, they changed it again in 1929. If you look at it, it's the same deal, except it has the two guys in the middle and the the stone and stuff, which I'll tell you what that is. But, uh, which this one here leads to the one we have now. We have June 20th, 1863 and the big stone in the middle. Each man, one, one man is a farmer, which is the guy with the blue coat. And there's a miner, which happens to be the guy in the red. He has the, the pickaxe and everything. Uh, it is the only state flag that has two crossed rifles in its seal. Due to the simple fact we were born out of the Civil War. So, but you had the cap of liberty on the on top of the two rifles. You have you have some hay, you have corn, coal, you got a anvil and a a sledgehammer because 
We were mining folk. <laughs> Absolutely. A lot of hard work. Now, the state's coat of arms is what they call that in the center of the flag, symbolizes mm -hmm. the principal pursuit. I'm going to just kind of read this uh, for you guys. The state's coat of arms in the center of the flag symbolizes the principal pursuits and resources of West Virginia. So this is, this is pretty important. So any of you that are studying for Golden Horseshoe or uh, want to get more inclined, you know, uh, educated on the history of West Virginia, understand that in the center is an ivy-draped boulder that has been inscribed with our date of creation, June 20th, 1863, the date of West Virginia's admission to the Union as a state. In the front of the boulder lie two cross-hunting rifles and, and a Phrygian cap, or the Cap of Liberty to illustrate the importance of the state's fight for liberty. And it talks about, as Corbett said, the farmer and the miner stand on either side of the boulder and represent agriculture and industry. So, you know, West Virginia is a state of agriculture and industry. You know, there are a total of four variations of the West Virginia state flag starting in 1905 with the first state flag, then 1907, and it changed again in 1929 until it was changed for a final time in 1962. And that gives us our current state flag. So, so the current flag is only 59 years old. There you go. Still older than me, but not older by much. Than me too. But not by much. <laughs> it's got me. <laughs> so anyways, we had some good digging times out in the field. It's been a little bit rough. It's been hot. There's been snakes, there's been ticks, there's been everything imaginable under the sun. So you want to be careful while you're out there. Any advice you want to give them before we roll it there, Corbett? Stay hydrated, keep your bug spray, and watch out for whatever wildlife that you could approach out there. Without any further ado, folks, enjoy this video footage from the field, and we'll be right back with more Digging History. Well, welcome to Digging in West Virginia. Whew. All right. I wanted to kind of shoot this video to show you some of the hazards. As we're out here walking through this thick wooded area, sometimes we run into friendly folks and, and uh, and it all works out just fine. But it is thick, it's up and down, and it's, uh, you know, it can be hazardous. So you gotta be careful when you're out here digging. Now let me show you how thick this is. So, so if you look around, it's very thick. Now over here, I worked this area, did some cutting over here, so you can see right here. And it opens up. Now, I did all this with these little cutters and this shovel. And as you can see, we've been out here looking, moving stuff around, cleared all this out, which this is nice. You see, opened it up quite a bit. Now we're gonna work our way across into that area over there. Do the same thing in that area. I have found some bullets and uh, found a J hook the last time I was out here. And, and I'm almost considering clearing this area out, but I don't think I am. I think I'm gonna move back here my son found his first bullet in this area. And uh, there's a video of him finding that, uh, which is, is a pretty cool thing. So I did clear this area out as well. Found a lot of bullets in here, a lot of bullets. As a matter of fact, there was a firing line that went straight up. I found Oh, probably 30 bullets from the bottom all the way up. And uh, that's where I think there was a firing line. Over here is where my son found his bullet at. So I'm thinking about cleaning this area out. 
uh, I want to look and see because there's a couple spots here that are really, really just full of junk. Uh, so before I invest much time and energy into that, I want to make sure I'm in the right spot. So anyways, welcome to Extreme Appalachian Digging, folks. And uh, you can't see it, but I've got my face mask on because, I've, uh, you know, I take allergy pills. But I'm telling you, it is hot. It is hot. It's 90 some degrees down here. I got on a backpack. I got all this equipment and I'm getting ready to spend some serious time cleaning this out. I'll show you what this looks like after it's done. And this is just the way that we do digging. And this is the way sometimes you have to do it in order to find anything halfway decent. So wish me luck, folks. Okay, folks, this is the same area that I just cleaned out. Now, it took me, I don't know, 25 minutes to get here. So I'm gonna have to stop and drink some water. It's 90 some degrees out here. All right, I haven't seen any snakes. So I'm thankful for that. And uh, let's see, somebody's calling me, never fails. Um, so I don't, I haven't seen any snakes out here and I haven't seen an overabundance of bugs, but you saw walking in here, I ran into a gentleman over there who is a homeless gentleman. Uh, I've ran into him before out here a couple of times. Nice man. Uh, you know, clean, takes care of himself. He just is in a bad situation. So, you know, we're not here to judge people and I'm going to help that man and, uh, I'm gonna keep that between me and God because you should really do things in private. You don't need to be rewarded for it openly. Uh, I'm of that belief. But this is kind of what I do down here. And if I can spread some goodwill and love, uh, and you know what, we do that too. That's what digging history is about. It's more than just us out here with metal detectors, folks. There's a lot of things that we do uh, you know, like this alone, you know, this could potentially prevent a forest fire. You know, this area has not been kept up. You know, COVID has prevented a lot of the normal cleaning and people have just gotten depressed. Uh, so they don't do a lot of it. So because we've been give, given permission to dig here, why not? help the people out that own the property and clean it up for them. And they're very appreciative of that. I get a call every time. They say, oh, I see the area cleaned out. Man, thanks a lot. So, a little bit of effort. I've had open access to this and other property because of that for the last two years. So, and it's been very beneficial. So I'm gonna get back to digging and back to uh, to clean in this area. I want to clean this whole area out right here. And then I'm going to detect it. First thing I'm going to do is drink water. All right, folks, keep watching on digging history. We are out here getting it. Whew. A little good work, a little hard work never hurt nobody. So work off some of this winter fat. Remember I told you about that as well, you know. We all lay around in the winter and we put on a few extra pounds. We need to slowly take it off, okay? Uh, has a lot to do with how we eat. I can promise you next winter, I will do things a lot differently. More time on the treadmill, less time eating too many meals. <laughs> all right, folks, take care. All right, folks, here's James McCormick on Digging History. And you know, what you have there is a, a black snake. So uh, they're, they're not poisonous, okay, as you can see. Um, he's not aggressive, but uh, black snakes actually eat mice and, um, and they will also kill venomous snakes. So don't kill a black snake. <laughs> 
as you can see, he's just as, as harmless as can be. There's no rattles. The head's got a blunt tip on it, but there are some poisonous snakes down here. And this guy right here uh, is gonna hunt for mice and, and snakes. So that's a friend. <laughs> so there you go. Keep watching on Digging History. Okay, folks, uh, James McCormick here with Digging History. Dug up an old toy here. Uh, looks like a toy airplane. I'll see if I can find the rest of it here. But anyways, yeah, probably Depression era. Let's say it's a biplane, uh, most likely. Found some other pieces of metal, too. And I'm setting it all over here, trying to figure out what I'm finding here. And it looks like I'm finding some old old toys so I'm gonna dig this area out looks like it might be a little trash pile here so that's what we'll we'll keep doing and uh, hopefully we'll find something else on digging history keep watching all right got James McCormick and Byron Tucker out here in the middle of nowhere it's been like the jungle out this place I did find a little stirrup down there. This old house site, check it out. Nice little stirrup. Somebody put their foot in there a few times to ride a horse. How's the dad going? Yeah. That's why I tried to tell Corbett, you can't find this stuff sitting on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's gonna get mad at us. Ah, uh, dang. He's gonna hunt us down. Hate that for him. <laughs> yeah, we found us a nice little spot here. This right here, that looks like this is a whole big building there. So this might have been, I don't know, this could have been a school or a, but it was built like in the 30s, I think. Yeah. So anyways, folks, keep watching on Digging History. We, we do find some good stuff every now and then. Coming to the end of a good day. I didn't find a lot of stuff. Found some bullets. Uh, well, actually one bullet. Probably four or five canister shot rounds from the Civil War. Uh, and I'm on my way back now. It's starting to get dark. It's been a long day, drank a lot of water. It's about a quarter to eight in the evening. So as you can see, still got some daylight down here. So, you know, a little cooler right now it has been a long day man it's been a long day uh, why do we dig hmm. well I'll tell you just being out here is so therapeutic now now obviously we'd like to find stuff uh, and we do. Uh, okay. I see. That is a shotgun shell, most likely. Or a 22 shell. <sighs> there it is. All right. Actually, it was neither. Uh, there's a piece of metal, you know, this could have been off of like a, a cup or something. I don't know. I'll put it in the bag and get it out of here and shut this thing off because it's driving me bananas. Fill my holes, even though, yeah, it's in the middle of the woods. So again, why do we dig? Hmm. Well, Personally, for me, this is my form of therapy. Outside of this and prayer and, you know, obviously spending time with my family, that's very therapeutic. But there's just something about being out in the woods, you know, and really getting in touch with, you know, all your senses, you know, because they're all keyed up right now. Uh, you know, we've got critters out here. We saw a snake earlier. Got that on video. 
uh, a friendly black, black snake. So, you know, you don't just have to kill every snake. I know a lot of people say, ah, oh, I kill every snake I see. Look, best friend you can have in the barn is a black snake because it keeps the mice out and, and also will kill, has been known to kill poisonous snakes as well. So, you know, rats, mice, you know, the black snake will take care of that. Okay, folks, I found my first canister shot out here. It has been a long, hot day. I've been out here for about three and a half hours. Like I've walked just a little over six miles. I found one bullet and one canister shot. Canister shot, you know, was inside the cannonball when it blew up. It was intended to blow up and throw out shrapnel everywhere. So we find a lot of that. So this is a good area. So I'll just kind of just pattern myself in this area a little bit and who knows, might find something. For sure you can't find nothing sitting on the couch. And today, man, I'm getting my workout in. That's a fact. <laughs> God bless folks. Pray for us, please, Lord. Uh, as we continue on with our mission, uh, you know, to bring you wonderful programming about history and about artifacts and just about things that we see in the woods and life in general. We hope that you enjoy the West Virginia Library Commission's uh, show, Digging History and Honoring the Sacrifice. It is a lot of fun and we enjoy doing it and we do it for free. We don't, we don't get paid to do this, folks. Uh, we do, however, we'll sell t-shirts so that we can cover some of our expenses uh, but you know, uh, we, you know, we don't, <laughs> we, we barely break even and most of the time we end up paying into it. So, uh, if you want to help us out, you can buy a t-shirt, just give us a contact, uh, give us a call. Uh, you can email me at wvpurpleheart1863, that's wvpurplehearrt1863 at gmail.com and I will hook you up. We just sold uh, five t-shirts to a family who watches us regularly and uh, we want to send out a big shout out to that family in South Charleston. Charlie and your family, God bless you. Thank you for watching us and thank you for supporting us and we hope that you enjoy those wonderful t-shirts and you'll wear them with pride. Thanks a lot folks and keep watching on Digging History. And we hope you enjoyed that footage from the field. As always, we enjoy being outdoors and doing those exciting things like digging history. You know, there's a lot of things that we can do while we're out there. We get a chance to think, we get a chance to unwind. It's excellent exercise for us and, and we get to find some pretty cool things every now and then. There are some days that we get stumped, folks. What I wanna tell you is, is don't let those days keep you from this hobby. Get out and be a professional metal detectorist. So we're going to go over a couple of things that we would like for people to observe so that we can build up the reputation of this hobby so that we can get access to more areas. Number one, always pick up your trash and the trash that you find. If you dig something up, whether it be something really cool or whether it be something really nasty, you pack it out of there. You dig it, you take it out. Corbett, what's the second thing that you want to tell them to do after you dig a hole? Cover it up. You don't know whether somebody's going to be walking through there or an animal and there's a broken ankle or a broken leg. I wouldn't take too kindly to it. But. So, I mean, cover your holes up. And plus, that, that screws with the permission. Because mm -hmm. another landowner see, talks to Bob down the road, well, you left all these holes in the yard. Mm -hmm. Well, then guess what? Me and James ain't digging. <laughs> yeah, we're sitting we, on the couch with you guys. That's true. No. <laughs> and we, you know that 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 is a prime reason why that people don't get access to <clears throat> property mm -hmm. to dig. And the other thing that you need to do is be respectful. Get permission before you just go borrowing in into somebody's property or something that you might think is public property, it doesn't hurt you to stop and say, hey, is it okay for me to dig here? I'm going to fill my holes. Um, we've been on property sites where the owner wanted us to give them everything we found, and we have. 
And we've done that because it's their property. Uh, but 98% of them say, we just like to see it, or in some cases, they're like, have a good time, fill your holes. But either way, it becomes a level of professionalism. Mm -hmm. What else? Well, me and James also have liability forms. So if that's something that somebody has an issue with, we'll fill out our liability form because if I fall and get hurt, that's on me. I understand mm -hmm. that. I'm not going to sue you. I'm not coming after you for nothing. Uh, you, were great, you were great and kind enough to give me permission to go on your property. I'm not going to turn around and do that to you. So we do have forms like that too. And like James said, your exercise, that was, mm -hmm. this is our therapy. So, and I haven't been out for a while. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in, I need it bad. You're, so. with it, you're going through withdrawals yeah, now. You need some digging therapy. Well, I got those two kids. That's so right. I'm chasing them two yahoos all day long. Take them out with you. We've taken his kids out <clears throat> digging before, and that's a great thing to do with your family as well. So remember, folks, get out, get off the couch, get to digging, get you a machine. You don't have to invest a lot of money in a machine. I'm telling you, you come, you get you a $100 machine, we'll show you how to use that thing. People, these guys right here, from what I've seen so far, and I don't promote, but from what i researched on their machines so far, they're, they're holding up to top-notch things like Mine Labs and yeah. Garrett's for half the price of what you pay for a Garrett One or third. a Mine Lab. So mm -hmm. I'm going to look into these guys some more, and then I'll let you guys, and I'll be brutally honest, on our own YouTube channel, you'll get the, <laughs> <laughs> you'll get, you'll get the full truth and uh, whether I like it or not or whether it's just a paperweight. But uh, we'll see. Yeah, it's a great machine. I love it. It's been good to me. But again, get a machine, get out, get to digging. And remember, folks, that a day digging history beats a day on the couch. So get out, get busy, and watch, like, and subscribe to us on our YouTube channel and on our Facebook page. Not only that, but if you go out and find stuff, share your stuff with us. Yep. So share we can share it with everybody else. You send us a video clip, we're going to start adding some of your video clips from the field and we're going to do that just for you guys because there are so many of you that are reaching out to us now. Uh, so if you need to get a hold of us, you can reach out directly to me at uh, area code 304-206-6065. That's James McCormick and Corbett Perkins. And you can also reach us uh, at wvpurpleheart1863 at gmail.com. And remember, folks, you will never be able to get into the hobby unless you get out and just do it. And get out and just do it, folks. Have a great day, and thank you for watching Digging History. Mm -hmm.